I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 22nd, 2014, I'm interviewing Dr. Louis Braverman for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the McCormick Place, Chicago. It's an interesting, it's an interesting effect. It, it was described originally by Wolf and Chekhov when Jan Wolf was a graduate student in Chekhov's laboratory at the University of California in, uh, L in, in um, Los Angeles, not in Los Angeles, I'm sorry, University of California in Berkeley. And uh, they, de they described the a process in the rat in which excess iodine given over the course of a, of a few days, if one then took out the rat thyroid, you'd find that there was, for about 24 hours, a subtle decrease in the amount of organic iodine within the gland. They couldn't measure hormones in those days. They couldn't measure T4 and T3, so they had no idea uh, exactly what it was, but they knew it was hormonal iodine. And then as the, as the rats were continued on these high doses of iodine and the thyroids were removed, normal thyroid hormone synthesis apparently began again. The organic iodine content rose back to ba a baseline. And that was called the acute wolf chakoff effect. And that is really what, that acute effect, if that continued, we'd all become hypothyroid, as would the rats, if they didn't adapt and escape from the effects of excess iodine. So within 24 hours in the rat, and probably a couple of days longer in humans, in spite of the fact that there are huge amounts of iodine in the blood, the thyroid resumes normal thyroid function again. And that's called the escape or adaptation to the acute wolf chakoff effect. And again, if that didn't happen, well, in my last two years of fellowship, uh, we, Sid, Sid Ingbard and I, and under his direction, uh, looked into the, what made the escape happen. And we did some studies in the rat and took out the rat's thyroid, incubated them with radioactive iodine, and in conclusion, decided and published in endocrinology, I believe, in the journal Endocrinology, I believe in 1963, that the escape from the acute wolf chakoff effect was due to some, something happened, and excess iodine just didn't get into the thyroid. So that even though it was present in the media, in the studies that we did, and in the blood in, in rats and humans, for reasons that were unclear at that time, the thyroid just stopped bringing in the excess iodine. The iodine trap dropped dramatically. And that what protected the rats, that's what we postulated. And that's the way it lay fallow for many, many years after that. And in 1995, I believe, uh, Nancy Carrasco and her group published for the first time the, the sodium iodide symporter. They cloned this molecule, which was responsible for trapping iodine from the blood into the thyroid at a very, very high gradient of about 40 to 1. So that looking back on the work that, that we did back in, the, in my fellowship and published in 1963, if the postulate would be, if, could this, let me put it this way, could the sodium iodide symporter be the mechanism whereby the iodine stopped coming into the thyroid when, it, when the, there was a lot of iodine in the plasma? So that when I went to the Brigham, working in, in Bill Chin's laboratory, there was a, a, a wonderful uh, uh, fellow from Singapore at that time, uh, Peter Eng, and uh, he was assigned by Bill and by me to reinvestigate the wolf chakoff effect. So he repeated exactly the same studies that we had done in 1960s except now could look at circulating T4, T3 in the rat, T4, T3, and TSH, and now, following Carrasco's work, could now measure the protein, the sodium iodide symporter, responsible for the trapping of iodine into the thyroid. And what uh, Peter essentially found 
was that within 24 hours in the rat, the, so the sodium iodide symporter markedly decreased. Therefore, in spite of the fact that the rats were continually given iodine, they no longer brought in excess amounts, and, and we now believe that the mechanism for the escape is due to a marked reduction in the sodium iodide symporter, the protein responsible for the iodine trap from blood into the thyroid uh, to markedly decrease. And that was published, I believe, in 1999 uh, or so. So that closed the loop for us.